Hello, I'm Dan Jurgen, and welcome to The Quest. What I wanted to do in The Quest was tell a story about how our energy world came about, how it's changing, and what it may look like in the future. This is truly the story of a quest for the energy on which our society so completely relies and for the security it affords. It is also the quest for a better environment and about how concern about carbon and climate may change the energy world. But you will find the story is not only about energy, it is also about politics and the clash of nations, about the rivalry for resources, and about vast shifts in economic fortunes. It's about the future of our way of life. It's also a story about deep convictions and human passions. In other words, it is also very much about people. It was a challenge to tell a story on this scale. I tackled it as a narrative in the tradition of my previous book, The Prize. In the quest, people and personalities loom large. Some are scientists and innovators. Some are entrepreneurs and risk takers. Some are politicians and statesmen. Some are schemers and promoters. And some are upbuilders and visionaries. Again and again, you will see the importance of creativity and the impact of the ability to think differently. But also of great importance are those other human qualities of willpower and sheer determination and true grit. Some of the characters in this book will be well known to you. President Barack Obama, who is trying to drive the future of the electric car, and former President George W. Bush, who embraced ethanol, he said, as a way to get Iran and Venezuela out of the Oval Office. Other characters will only be known to some of you, such as Admiral Hyman Rickover, the stubborn, iconoclastic father of the nuclear navy and of nuclear power, who drove other admirals crazy with exasperation, but whom former President Carter called the greatest engineer of all times. You will find yourself back at that dinner in 1896 with the great inventor Thomas Edison and a young engineer from Detroit, Henry Ford. Edison encouraged Ford to place his bet on what Edison called the hydrocarbon, gasoline, as the fuel of the future. A few years later, however, Edison changed his mind and poured much effort and much money into trying to create an electric car. But what this story is really about is our future. And underpinning this narrative are major questions. How will we find the energy to fuel what in 20 years may be a global economy that is twice as large as our current economy? How can we assure the security of our energy supplies on which we rely against threats ranging from political upheaval, as we've seen in Libya, to natural disasters like hurricanes Katrina and Rita, to what has been called the bad new world of cyber war? And how will the rise of climate change as a major political issue change our future energy mix? Energy will continue to be central to the geopolitics of our planet. And with the rise of China and India and the other emerging economy nations, this will change in new and unexpected ways. Technology will be central to solutions for our energy challenges. After all, energy has been a technology business since James Watt built his first steam engine. I hope that you will find this quest as engaging as I do, and you will find this story not only informative, but also surprising and engrossing and entertaining. And I also hope that in reading the quest, you will come away with greater confidence about our future. The size of what needs to be done in energy is very large, very, very large. And so are the risks and challenges. But what we have going for us is the most important resource of all, human creativity. And for the first time in history, we are going to see it deployed on a truly global scale. All in all, this is quite a story, and I hope you will join me in this quest.